Well, here's something that I've often wondered, and maybe you have wondered. Why don't Christians win the lottery and just turn all that money back to Jesus? Why don't we ever hear about that? Well, I'm, some things I can already hear from you. Well, maybe they do win it, they just didn't tell you. Or maybe they do win it and they do great with it, but nobody covered it. Or, this is the one I think most people would come up with, they don't win it because Christians don't play the lottery. Are you kidding? Sure they do. Should they? I don't know. People will say, well, that's gambling. Yeah, it is. It, it is. But again, it is spending money for dreaming. Whenever you, when you buy a dollar ticket, now by the way, if you're mortgaging your house, if there's grocery money going missing, it, there's a whole lot of difference between buying a ticket and buying 30 or 40, or standing there in line to buy all the scratch cards. If you just want to buy a ticket, you know what you're really buying? You're buying possibilities. You're buying Schrodinger's cat, which was alive or dead, both, we have no idea, until we open the box and all the possibilities collapse into whatever is there. Dead cat, live cat, no cat. All right, if you don't know about that, send me an email at info at rsafeharbor.com and I'll do a special thing on Schrodinger's cat. The point is this, let's say you buy a lottery ticket for a dollar, two dollars, whatever they are, they seem immensely complex to me. Um, I'm sh pretty sure people have to sit around with calculators and a compass and protractor to figure this out. But you buy one ticket and let's say it's a Monday and it's a Wednesday draw. What you've done for a dollar or two dollars is bought yourself possibilities and dreams. This is what I think I would do with it. And I would do this and that would be amazing. And then in two days it all collapses and you don't win. And you're going, oh, I didn't win, but I only lost two bucks. Now, would it be smarter of you to put that $2 into the bank or put it into a, uh, to give to your church or something? Of course it would be, but that's not my real point. I think I have an idea why Christians don't routinely win the lottery. And it, it all started with a big meeting we had in Colorado Springs about nine or 10 years ago there was just a request for all the charitable organizations in Colorado Springs to send representatives to this breakfast. And it was a thing about how we were all going to get together and, and serve together. And as I looked at that huge ballroom of a hotel with all these different people from all the different kind of religious tribes there, and some that weren't even religious, uh, they just, they, they were just charitable. And they were all putting their pennies in, to make a bigger pile of pennies to do something with. Now I thought of that again this morning as this is being taped, you won't see it for several weeks, but we had a breakfast for GraceWorks, which is an amazing ministry here in Middle Tennessee, specifically out of Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, just the people that are there, the, the people that work there, they just have an incredible heart and so much faith. Well, the breakfast, this one was not a fundraising breakfast. It was a, you know, our way of thanking you and just catching you up to date. Here's our annual report. And it was lovely. And as I sat at the table with Dave Cassily, who's my executive minister slash tech minister slash treasurer, uh, we, we wear a lot of hats at our safe harbor to keep things going. Uh, there were also two people from a community church. We'd never heard of it before. They were delightful people. And then there was a man over here that works for GraceWorks. He's a Grace worker, uh, which is what they call themselves, which is cool. <clears throat> then look at the next tables. They're from all these different churches, most of which I've never been inside of their building and probably never will be. And it reminded me of the Colorado Springs move, uh, gathering. Why? Because of something I thought then. I thought again this morning. You see, GraceWorks needs a lot of funds. Uh, food prices have gone up. Same with one generation away. <coughs> this is being recorded when the Bradford payers have made their, their reappearance. People who feed and care for people right now are hurting because the prices have gone up so rapidly. Uh, inflation is just really hurting them. Like it hurts you. But I, I couldn't help but think, they need this, wouldn't it be just so awesome to be able to open up your checkbook, 
because you just won a lottery. Maybe not the super big prize, <clears throat> but you know, here's $50,000. How awesome that would be. And I gotta admit, that would be incredibly awesome. I would love to be able to do that. But then I thought, but if you do, and I turned around and looked at the other people, they don't need them. They're, no, oh, they, they got it sorted now. And I know they have, to, they have to find a new building and such, so it'd be millions, not 50,000, but don't lose the thread. The thread is this. If we just knew there were mega rich Christians you know, hiking across the land, flinging out checks to any Christian good work that needed them, that sounds like that would be great, but it would rob millions of believers from their ability to sacrifice, from the gift of having to scrimp and save and do without to hand to somebody else. Giving is an act of worship. Giving is an act of faith. Giving is a discipline. And we need to give. Now, this is not for you to you know, turn your pockets inside out and hand us what you got. That's not what this is. It's not about me. It's not about grace works. I think God chooses the common things of this world, the humble, the big, and the mighty. Scripture even says so. He takes one boy's lunch to feed 5,000. He takes a bit of water, and then people are baptized. He takes the little things, and he even says, if you give a cup of water in my name, I'll never forget it. But what if we didn't need you to give? Because we're just, we're doing pretty good here. Our only problem is it's hard, we're running out of room to put all the cash. I mean, if we had that situation, you might be going, yay, God, our safe harbor is doing great. And, and I guess it would be, but then we wouldn't be hearing from people like you that send $5, $10, whatever it is, because I know that money, that's a sacrifice. That's a hunk of change. And you get to make the sacrifice. By the way, we give too. I, I think um, if you made a list of the biggest donors to our safe harbor, it almost certainly in include the people who come on Sunday to help put it go, make it go out because we need to give too. And if there was just so much money we didn't need to give, that robs us of the ability to do well, to care, to be invested, to put our money and our lives on the line. So I think that's probably why Christians don't routinely win the lottery. There's another reason too. And this one, I'll, it'll be my last one, I promise, all right? Uh, a lot of Christian, Christians don't routinely win the lottery because it's mathematically impossible to win the lottery almost. It's like being struck by lightning three times, then attacked by a bear, and then being beaten and mugged by a clown in the same day. The odds are just astronomical. So if you are buying a ticket, I hope you understand that all you're doing is buying dreams and possibilities for a couple of days and if you understand that and you've got the two bucks or whatever it is, okay. Some people say, well, at least we know it's going for a good cause with education. Like, no, you don't. <laughs> Anytime you hand your money over to something that'll say eventually, you know, some of it will get to a good cause, it, it might not. But you're just buying possibilities. But if you get upset that you didn't win, or if you put too much money in there instead of putting it in the bank, or to a, a legitimate charity or something, then you need help and you need, to, you need to talk to your pastor, your therapist, you need to call the gambling hotline because that's a problem. But sometimes I'll buy a magazine thinking, I will enjoy this and I find in three pages I didn't. I just gambled seven, eight dollars on the, uh, the odds that this was going to provide entertainment and information for me and I lost but I don't get mad. I don't yell, why God, why do you let evil people enjoy this magazine? You know, whatever it is, you know, uh, it, we, no, no. God doesn't choose to let other people do the heavy lifting. 
He says, you've got to lift your bed. God doesn't choose other people to do your work and your Christianity for you. Your pastor, I don't care what you think, you can hire him to go visit the sick and do all the Christian stuff, but you still have that obligation to do all of that. Because we can't hire somebody else to be Christian for us, and God's not gonna supply the lottery to somebody so that we don't have to give anymore. Now, we give, and I know you do. Thank you for making this possible. Enjoy the rest of your week and don't put too much money into dreams, but put them toward people when you can. Cheers.